So I put my uh, multicultural, very warm jumper on this morning, <laughs> rather than uh, um, lovely glittery clothes. But uh, I mean, it's always a pleasure to come to this uh, celebration. I, you know, you have it every year, and I don't come every year, but uh, it always is, you know, so rewarding just to see what everybody's been doing and um, just the marvelous work that you do, the displays and. Uh, the stories that we've heard about the progression of how people have uh, you know, started at entry level courses and have worked their way right through and are now doing their level one qualifications and looking for opportunities to get into work. Um, and you just make us really proud to, to see you all. And I echo June's um, sort of comments around the, the tutors and the staff team because it's such a lovely, wonderful, friendly place to come to and uh, everybody feels that uh, you know it's a great place to live and learn. So I'd just like to say thank you to you all. Thank you for waiting. Um, this is Albina Brahilika. Yes, okay. Now, um, I know Albina from actually a WEA course in Reading. Okay, so you, we want to know by the end of this interview, why is she in Slough? But first of all, Albina, can you tell me how and when did you first come into contact with the WEA? Um, yeah, it was some time ago, it was 2002, um, and I'd, I'd, I'd arrived in 2000 in, in UK, um, so I attended college for a couple of months, um, then personal circumstances changed, I had to drop out of college, um, I had a little boy, so then the first time I attended WEA was in 2002 um, for English lessons. Uh, which obviously um, it, it was something that I didn't know English and I um, um, I needed I needed help I needed support with English. Okay. And uh, at the time, your little boy was how old? About a year old. So where was your little boy when you were learning? Um, well, partly that I kind of dropped out of college was that I couldn't afford childcare. Um, to be able to go full time to college, so um, it was in the crash, on the WA crash, um, when I attended work lessons, and it worked well for him because he could socialise with little children, and I could socialise with adults because I was quite <laughs> isolated as well, so didn't have much family or friends around, um, and I could just I had a chance to talk to adults as well as learn English and practice what I'd learned already. 
Now you actually, again, you weren't in the classes for very long. I think it was only one year or even less than that. So it was one year of ESOL. And then what else did you do with the WEA? I did a computing course. Um, coming from where I come from, it wasn't very um, a country where, you know, modernized and um, so electronic wasn't very advanced so I didn't really know anything about computers so I learned the basics of computer um, with the WEA um, and then I moved on to, to do an um, interpreting course uh, but although I wasn't with the WEA very long to learn English I think WEA gave me a very good environment to practice what I'd learned because that's sometimes a fear of uh, when you don't speak English, you do get a vocabulary uh, when, when you come and you learn. But you're never, you're never too brave to practice that. So you can't, you can't say something in a room full of people which you might be the college class because of the, uh, uh, the fear that you might get it wrong and you might say it wrong. Yeah. So in the WEA it was um, a very good environment that you could ask questions, you could um, practice what you've learned already. And since then, I mean, you did ESOL, you went on, you, you, did, you mentioned the interpreting course, the computing. What happened after that? Um, I then went on to, um, to do an access to higher education course um, with um, Thames Valley University. Um, and then went to Reading University to complete um, a degree. A social work degree, and that's what I'm doing now. So, how do you find yourself in Slough then? Because do you live in Slough? Um, no, I don't live in Slough, um, but I work in Slough. I'm a social worker. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm sorry you got lost, but I hope you really enjoy having some of the food. And please do make sure you talk to our guests a little bit more about your story. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And welcome Fiona McTaggart, the MP for Slough, to our celebration, and she's going to say a few words. Well, I feel tricky because I just arrived, <laughs> and I shouldn't come and speak when I just arrived because I came here to listen to you. One of my very favourite things as MP for Slough is the day that learners from the WEA comes up to the House of Commons. And I go around the House of Commons and I feel a bit like a mother hen. <laughs> because there I am with a trail of beautiful women wearing beautiful saris and shawl kameez and so on. And all these posh chaps who are MPs, look how they go. <laughs> and there are all these languages being taught between them, and I'm saying, you're learning English, let's practice English. <laughs> but it is a wonderful moment because we, just for a moment, change a place which doesn't sufficiently reflect all the communities that make up Britain. And actually, one of the great strengths of this country is that we are the most diverse country in the whole of Europe. We speak more languages. And one of the reasons why Slough is the third most productive town in the whole of the United Kingdom is because of our diversity. So, you are part of our strength, but in order for us to use your talent, you need that little key, this wonderful language. So good luck in your learning, because it opens doors. And as I said in a speech in the House of Commons just a few weeks ago, that the key thing about mums learning English is not just that you get liberation for you, but actually you can help your children. 
And if you can speak English, and if you can read English, you are helping them to be the next leaders and learn at school. So good luck in that. Enjoy yourselves.